Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Zaji, and today I want to share with you a little bit about some knitting things. In particular, I am really happy to share with you for the second time about my knitting, um, what I'm working on, what things I'm thinking about making, some yarns. I love that I have this, pla this place for us to come together and chat about this. So if you are enjoying this knitting podcast, please give me a heart down below in the comment section and subscribe so that we can keep talking about yarn stuff together. And we will get started with this video. Okay, so I want to start this video talking about what I'm wearing. And so first I'm going to talk about the non-new thing. This is actually Midnight Cardigan from Kim Hargraves. She is one of my absolute favorite knitwear designers. Um, I have so many of her books. These are, wait, here? Here. Some of these are her books, but I have loads by my bedside table as well because I do love knitting books anyways um this is my absolute favorite cardigan because it is so super warm it's knit with bulky weight yarn and it was such a fast and easy project i wear this thing all the time i love this sweater except for if you can see my high traffic areas have gathered quite a bit of pills this is um a yarn from Valley Yarns, which is webs.com or webs or yarn.com's brand. Um, I think this is Berkshire Bulky Yarn. So it's um, a single ply yarn, which is why I knew it was going to pill up like this so much, especially with how much I wear this cardigan. But it is still one of my favorites. I'm constantly plucking off the pills because it drives me crazy, but I do love this design and this cardigan, and I will wear it even even still. I don't know. Let me know how you feel about pills. I know that some people really, you know, it drives them crazy and some people, they really don't care. It's just the nature of the beast, which it is. So I wear it anyways. But the next finished thing I want to talk about is actually this cowl. I'm going to go ahead and take it off now. This cowl actually comes from a book that I talked about in the last podcast. This is Leaning Tower. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I made this cowl about half the size that it actually is written to be. This is supposed to use two full skeins of the um, Cascade Highland Duo, which is a Highland wool and alpaca mix yarn. I talked about it and how soft it is, and now that I've knit up with it, it is actually so much softer than I could have ever imagined what um i could not wait a full two skeins i had to cast it off <laughs> as soon as i reasonably could so i could wear it as soon as i reasonably could and it has actually started to get quite cool in colorado so i have had this on um and people are like wow jump in the gun and i'm like yes this is my time okay i love fall and i love this design so much it has this kind of like swirl effect in the garter ridges it's a really easy repeat to remember I did make a few mistakes because I was just like knitting this at my bedside while I was watching several awesome movies so you know I usually am someone who's just like I'm going to just keep going it'll be fine and even if I were to make this design again which I could see myself making this again and making it the full length now that I know what the half length kind of is and this is a standard shawl size I believe it's about oh wait I have my on my table right here so I haven't blocked this cowl out at all but it is um still 11 inches tall so this is still a super tall cowl and I figured you know having it be 22 inches 
mm, or 24 I don't remember what the full length is supposed to be in the pattern I was just like that would be nice but it's also awesome as 11 inches that is definitely a um, project that I would see being a standalone but anyways I love this design it's so soft so warm so squishy the best way to bring in fall the first day of fall was actually yesterday so this is Ugh, I'm so happy to have this done. It was really fast to work up too. Um, even with it being a project that you work both knit and pearls in, I was expecting this to go a lot slower than it did. And I feel like if and or when I make this cowl neck again, I would love to do it the full length and just see. But yep, that's my first thing done. I'm not going to put it back on because honestly, I think it's going to get too hot in here that cowl is actually quite fuzzy also and i could feel the fluffs kind of going everywhere and i feel like there's one in my eyelash and i'm like going a little bit crazy trying to get it off of me anyways so i think i might actually block this um at some stage just to see what this highland duo is like once it is blocked and washed because i feel like it will probably get even longer once i put it in the wash and everything kind of stretches out as well not put it in the wash but like hand wash it um so it'll be a super tall cowl regardless i don't know the full length to me i was like oh my gosh that might be actually so crazy but that would be like a solid neck full of warmth and if you wanted to pull it over your um your like face just to keep as warm as you could when it gets real cold um if it is the full length you definitely would still have loads of fabric on your neck to stay nice and warm even with it pulled up this one i might start to get kind of a gap in the neck area if i try to pull it up over my um my ears too so i don't know I'm gonna move on from that cow. I do really love that design and i'm excited to actually try other designs from the book as opposed to making this cowl again but we'll see that could change okay so I want to go ahead and start with my work in progress that has been a work in progress for the longest I am really trying to chug along through this pattern and just get it off my needle so that I can wear it and um it's going okay I finished the first sleeve I can't remember if I talked about that in the last video but this is the endless possibility sweater from drops design it's a free pattern it is beautiful I really love this design so much um, and I'm very 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 excited about how it's coming along so I have finished the first sleeve and as you can see i've marked all of my decreases and you can see there's a huge gap right here because these sleeves as written were not going to be nearly long enough for me i'm a tall gal so i need some extra length just about everywhere um so i added i think i think i only added maybe two centimeters more than they recommended um in total and just kind of worked from there I guess I don't know but it wasn't to the pattern so I did go ahead and mark every single decrease so that as I'm working on the second sleeve which I just picked up yesterday I can match the shaping as much as possible so that the sleeves end up somewhat even length and size and shape and all that good stuff so yeah that's the only thing I really have to say about this project it is coming along I did kind of make the sleeves a little bit different so let's see there we go so you can see how on the second sleeve it has a wider band of um the tan because on this side of the sweater it's kind of a wider band of tan i don't know i was trying to match it to the body while still matching it to the other sleeve because i'm pretty sure this yarn will um follow the same pattern however I don't know they will be a little bit different um, I just hope that they both end with this really long patch of blue at the bottom so they can look somewhat even I don't know but I'm really excited I love these colors I feel like by the next by the next time that I come on here that I should have finished this other sleeve please let me have finished this other sleeve <laughs> but I have this much yarn left so i'll definitely have loads left over because i have a lot of this yarn left over from the cake that i used from the body 
so I don't know what other projects I would work I don't know if I would have to limit this to being like a color and a color work project or something but it is quite a bit I could probably make a hat or some mittens or something with the rest of this we'll see but I'm really enjoying um, I'm really enjoying this yarn so far I'm really sad that it was discontinued but it's very beautiful so very beautiful okay anyway it's gonna move on okay so the next thing that I'm going to talk about is something for my daughter you all know that I love to knit for my little one she is my everything <laughs> But anyways, I like to make little stuff for her also because her projects come together very quickly. But I have started a project that I've been looking at for quite some time. This is the Turtleneck Poncho. Um, I can't remember the designer's name, but I will have that on the screen for you. And I am using a yarn from Joanne for this project. So I'm going to show you the yarn. I have one that's that I'm not using yet. So this is Joanne's brand. This is Big Twist. I'm using Big Twist Soft. I think this is supposed to be like Red Heart something. I don't know. But this yarn is definitely very soft for an acrylic yarn and it's very smooshy. Um, these are really big um, skeins. I think they have almost two balls. Um, it's like the size of two balls because it's a hundred. Well, it's 170 grams, so it's about one and three quarters of a of a ball. So it's pretty big. But I did get two balls of this just because of the shaping with this project and because Big Twist Yarn and Joanne is usually pretty inexpensive, I decided to go ahead and just get another ball and save myself the headache of winding off some of this for the shaping of this um, poncho. But I intend to use this and I also have this other yarn that I'm going to use. So I will have the picture I'm sure up for you to be able to see, but the main part of the project or of the poncho is in like a kind of gray color for their project and I'm using orange and for the, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And then for the turtleneck and her little pockets, I'm going to use this beautiful um, yarn from Red Heart. So this is the Red Heart Hello Gorgeous. I'm not really sure if they sell this yarn anymore. I've had this for a very long time. And I'll show you the label so you can see like what it looks like. Okay, so you can kind of see how it is a very variegated yarn. It has so many colors. I've actually already used this yarn to make a pair of thick socks. Um, and this is the other skanks I bought too at that at the same time, thinking I was gonna make a hat, but I decided I didn't there's no point in me making hats because nothing fits over my hair, but um, I thought this would be so beautiful in combination with this color. Isn't that pretty? I thought that would be such a cute combination and I am literally chomping at the bit to go ahead and get to the point to where I can put this turtleneck on. Now I know that this um, this project is knit as one piece so you start at the bottom hem and you knit all the way over to the front hem and then um, you there's some kind of like casting off and shaping and stuff for the neck hole and so once I get past kind of like that shoulder area and get enough of the front on to put this turtleneck on I'm gonna put the turtleneck on I am dying to see what these yarns look together and how it looks in this really pretty it's like a garter it's a garter rib that's at the bottom and I want to see that as a big squishy um, turtleneck kind of cowl situation and I really like this design because for Nala it will be a really good layering piece for her to wear inside of her jacket that will also give her a scarf like thing for her to be able to wear and Nala's not as reliable with things that can come off so giving her an actual traditional long scarf is just not really ideal she always 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 loses them so this is a really good kind of way for me to get two birds with one stone she's got a vest and a scarf what I'm so okay Anyways, very excited. Cannot wait to put the turtleneck part onto this. And it just, oh, I love the texture. The texture of this stitch is amazing. 
I absolutely am in love with creating this but also it is just so soft and nice to touch on I I cannot wait for Nala to have this and you can see the garter rib down here which is also so beautiful but this is just a really textural piece and I really am excited to make this up for her I'm way more excited than she is but she has been asking to touch it and feel on it and I do have a few stitch markers on there so I've got um, another star I think this one is the same as the other one but this one is on a a claw instead of a ring and down here I have a gold star for a little baby so these are my progress markers this was from the first day second day and then third day right here so I've been just slowly chugging along this is at my bedside now instead of the cowl I had before as I said, this is a project that I have by my bedside, so I start to know that I work very slow once I start to get tired and the night's going on. Sometimes I'll try to stay up a little bit longer if I want to keep knitting, but if I'm literally taking twice as long to get through a row as I was before, it's probably time for me to turn off my side table lamp and put my knitting away. So I will put on a timer on myself just to see if I'm keeping the same pace working through um, my project and I don't know it's just interesting to look at sometimes but while I was working on this I had my timer on and I was doing about let me see if I have the app okay so I don't know if it'll be showing the right way but my average row time was about five minutes and 50 seconds that pace is pretty awesome I was doing each row in about six minutes which is great oh my goodness so it, with those kinds of metrics, it'll even tell you about how long it'll take you to finish um, doing this project. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but it's just a cool feature that I discovered. And so if I said there were 100 rows, it would take me about 8 hours and 56 minutes to finish the remaining 92 rows. I don't think that I have that many rows in this project left, but that's just what it's automatically set to. Um, so you can play around with those settings, but I just thought that was really fun. I did that for another project as well, and we'll look at that in a second. So it is actually a recent cast on as well that I haven't shown since the last one. And this actually comes from Rowan Magazine, the 70th edition. Now I haven't talked about this magazine on YouTube. I did show that I picked it up on Instagram, but I haven't ta talked about this, this, um, this book yet but I can tell you right now that Rowan never disappoints well I won't say never disappoints but I always find a couple of designs that I really love and you will see some of them in this video oh my gosh okay so I do have the magazine I do have the magazine and I have already um, sticky noted all of the patterns that I like it's something that I do in my books mostly because I hate every single time when you have to like you want to look for something in the book you have to like go through the whole book this is a huge book too like it is big and thick I think let's see how many pages are in here a hundred and twenty pages oh, 138 pages in this magazine so it's not playing okay so um, I'm currently working on the triangular shawl with sheer bands which is by Georgia Farrell I'm gonna try to find the page real quick. Oh my God, it's stunning. I'm gonna put the picture up as well. <laughs> but this is a beautiful design. Now they used a color which I have been obsessed with, but Kid Silk Haze is very expensive and the projects I wanna make, especially this project, it would be like $500, which I'm just not keen to spend. But anyways, um, I actually purchased a different yarn to make this project. And it is from Premiere. And I will talk about it now, but I also got some more Premiere yarns as well. Um, this used to be called something else from Premiere. I'm not sure what it used to be called. But... I purchased it under the new name Shamonix, 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 Shamonine. I don't know. 
have no clue how to pronounce the name of this yarn, but it is such an interesting yarn from Premier. I don't know why this yarn made me so excited, and I got an email from them because I'm a subscriber because I am an addict. So I got an email from them talking about how this yarn was on sale. It was like three for $10. And it's 85 grams. So I did the math very easily and saw that this would be a really good candidate for this shawl. Now this shawl, as I said, calls for Kid Silk Haze, which is technically a lace weight yarn. However, in this project, the yarn is coming up more at a worsted weight, um, weight uh, gauge. So I figured by using this yarn, which is actually a sport weight yarn, it's a, a two weight yarn, that I might be able to get away with it. And I think that I am. My gauge looks pretty close, if not the same, close enough for an accessory. So I'm using this yarn instead, and it is an 80% acrylic, 10% mohair, and 10% polyamide um, blend. And the polyamide is supposed to be an angora effect type fiber so it's supposed to look like angora and i think it does this is a pretty convincible yarn mix to me it's super soft it has that same kind of fuzziness as like any other kind of mohair yarn and i just i'm very pleased that i saw this and i'm using this for this project and i i like this so a lot and I did buy more color so I will show you like I said again but this is the project that I have been working on with this yarn one thing I will say though is that this yarn does tangle quite easily and quite terribly because it is so fuzzy but you don't have to worry about dropping stitches or anything this is what I have so far <laughs> just laugh so hard I because this is really small in comparison to how huge that shawl is supposed to be obviously I know it will take time and yarn and stuff to put this together but it's still kind of just funny to me <laughs> I don't know why I have done um, three garter bands and two of the sheer panels so this project is worked with garter ridges and then these kind of stockinette ridges and it makes this you know big triangular shape and it has eyelet increases on the um, edge which I think will be the top edge and down the center with how it's worked which I thought was pretty genius and quite beautiful actually um this yarn is super fuzzy as you can see okay there so you can kind of see it a little bit better so i'm pulling it just a little bit but i'm almost positive that when this works out the stockinette bands will actually end up being a lot more sheer and less you know rolled up on itself so i'm i'm very pleased <laughs> This is in fact the shawl that I was talking about in the last podcast where I said I have in fact already bought yarn and cast on another shawl. This is the shawl. Um, I've really liked working on this. It's been a really easy repeat for me to remember so I'm able to just kind of knit on this more or less as a background knit. It's really great to have when I'm watching movies or when I am listening to an audiobook or something like that. It's really, really easy to knit on, which I appreciate. So I think that even though, like I said, this is just a small bit, I feel like this will come together as it comes together, but it's so pleasant to work on. I don't even mind how long it feels like it's taking. But this was just from one day's or I guess you could say two days because I, this was what I did the first day was just this bottom triangle and then from up to there I have been working. So, so I've got a little moon here as my stitch marker from the last day and then my round or I guess my increase, this uh, yarn over increase, I have a little heart. The last project that, or the last whip that I'm going to talk about is actually one for my husband. Oh my gosh, I finally have something <laughs> working for him. Okay, so I know I talked about making the hat from Kathleen Taylor from that same book. Um, it's actually with the same color work design as my daughter's Geometric Dazzle um, cardigan, except for the colors are just different. 
So I said I was going to cast that on and I still do mean to cast that on but my husband says that he really would prefer that I finish the cardigan that I started for him earlier this year as well. Now I talk about my Spark cardigan all the time but it is one of my favorite and most worn cardigans. If I'm not wearing that one I'm wearing this one and he has just kind of noticed how nice that Spark cardigan is and he really wants to have a nice soft cozy warm shawl cardigan as well so I have actually put in some effort to making that spice cardigan so spice is the other cardigan that was released from Andrea Mowry with the spark cardigan um, they are essentially the exact same designs the only thing that's different is the closure in the front and the color work is missing the large chevron motif on the spice cardigan and then you get the addition of pockets so it's such a cool design i really like the shape and the look of it i cannot wait for my husband to be wearing it i just have you know it just kind of kept getting lost and i made the mistake of trying to start this project by the sleeves first and that's the way that she recommends that you work this project but just for me i know that i don't love working sleeves so I started the sleeves and they just hibernated as a part of a sleeve for a lot of months. So I have instead decided to cast on the body and start working on the body and once I get to the part where I need to join in the sleeves I will go ahead and work the sleeves up. Okay I do remember that I had this yarn tangled around. I need to listen. I ju just ignore that. <laughs> So I have the bottom ribbing almost done. This is in Cascade 220. Um, this is in the color Smoky Blue, I think. It is so beautiful. Such a beautiful shade of blue. I actually have not seen this color very often, but um, I think that I will need to buy more of this yarn because I didn't buy the full sweaters quantity amount when I purchased all this yarn. I think I still need to buy maybe two or three skeins of this and maybe one skein of the contrast color. I'll show you in just a sec. As you can see, I've been working on quite a few things, so I will pick this up every now and again. This is probably from a day or two of working on this ribbing, and I'm just going to slowly be working through this, but I am going to be committed in working on this at least twice a week. Um, because I want to be able to finish this cardigan before my husband's birthday, which is in November. And if I remember things correctly, this pattern was really enjoyable to work up the color work on it. And I know that I work color work really fast because I love it. So I'm hoping that once I get past the ribbing that the body will just kind of come together on its own. But like I said, I do kind of want to get this finished by November so that he can actually wear it on his birthday and it can be an actual gift for him. What the... My goodness. So I have also caked up the contrast color this beautiful mix of green and blue and purple is going to be running through that smoke blue color and I think it will be absolutely stunning. This is Superwash Wave uh, from Cascade 220 Superwash Wave. I think the color is like into the ocean or something like that. I'll have it on the screen. But so beautiful. But I want to show you the sleeve that I worked up because I did actually get to the color work so you can see those two colors together a little bit more clearly. Okay, so you can see already how beautiful that stands out um, within the smoke blue. I think that is going to be so beautifully like interesting but still quite subtle not stand out in your face so this is going to also be a cuff that folds in so it would be worn double cuffed and i just oh my god so pretty love 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 that i did pick out these yarns online i got this yarn i'm pretty sure from webs yarn.com and so I'll have to go back and purchase some more as I said before but I could not have picked a better combination out. I think these yarns go together perfectly and my husband is very happy that I finally have started working on something for him and I'm feeling good. I don't mind knitting other things for other people but 
As I mentioned, my sweater mojo was nowhere near where it is right now. So I am kind of chugging along through all these sweaters and it's amazing. So um, those are gonna be all my whips, but I do wanna share with you some things that I recently purchased. So let's go ahead and get into the haul part of this video. The first thing I'm gonna share with you is the rest of the Chamonix, Chamonix, Chamonix whatever that yarn is called. The other colors that I got from Premier, they, as I said, they were having a sale that was three for 10 on this particular yarn. And I ended up buying, um, I didn't even say what the other color was called, I think. So I have got Tide Pool. Tide Pool, which is this um, blue color. And I got three balls of that. Then I also got three balls of the pink color. This is peach blossom, which is actually not peach at all. If I'm being honest with you online, I thought this was going to be far more yellowy orange and it is definitely much closer to like a light pink. I don't know. I guess it is. It's pe It's a peachy pink, but it's definitely not as peach as I wanted but I think it does still look okay on my skin tone so I'm definitely still going to use it but I'm going to be using this yarn for a different project from the Rowan magazine again but this time I want to make this is called chromium all the patterns at the beginning of this book are using DMC diamond diamante something like that. It's basically a metallic embroidery thread. However, the way that they've used them in these patterns, I feel like really um, gives that uh, thread the opportunity to shine through. So I am not going to be using DMC brand because they only sell them in 35 meter reels, which are like so small. Each one of those is like $3, but I actually have purchased embroidery thread before from a different company called Superior Threads and I actually have already ordered again um, for this book like I said metallic thread. Now I'm going to show you the mini cones. These offer a hundred and or a thousand ninety eight yards of this metallic embroidery thread and it's really nice stuff. This is good quality. It's not DMC but it is still really shiny a thread um, weight fiber string thing that you can add in to add shine in your project just like these are and it's a much better deal. These are about $16. I think the most expensive one is $18 because it has a lot of variegated colors in there. But um, for the standard solid um, metallic colors, they're about $16. And um, for this project, it'll be more than enough. So I got rose gold and I also got regular gold and I'll have those linked and I'll also have some pictures up here so you can see what I'm talking about and I'm going to use that with this peach color for the bottom just like how they have this kind of peach well it's like a dusty pink color so I'm going to use this pink instead and then for the top in that middle stripe is not actually a change of color at all. They just added in that metallic thread, which is insanely beautiful and such a cool and pretty and chic idea. I love the style of this sweater in general. Y'all know I love that kind of like funnel neck sweatery thing. Uh, I love it. I want to do that with the metallic thread, like I said. And then for that top part, they have it in white, but instead... Okay, so I forgot that I actually had purchased some of this at Joanne, um, and it was in the bag that had the Joanne and yarn for Nala's little project but this is the rose gold DMC diamond thread it's just super metallic thread weight um, embroidery thread so it is very beautiful like I said the effect will still be the same for that project they wanted you to use one that was more like mauve colored which I am still going back and forth on whether or not I will use the mauve but they have that option as well but I figured I want to do something more light this is the other color I got this is heirloom rose I got four of these the other one is individually wrapped and way harder to get into so I'm not even going to try to on camera but this beautiful color with the peach I think that's a really good combination with like rose gold in between the two I think that's pretty so I'm gonna do that 
Um, I got, like I said, four balls of this. I think I will only end up using maybe one ball for that other sweater. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with the rest of this yarn, but I don't mind it sitting in my stash. So, yay! So I also had ordered from Premiere quite a while ago. So this order, let me see, I have the order sheet. Okay, so this order is actually from March time, but I remember it took quite some time for it to get to me because there was still stuff going on in the world, I guess. I don't know, but I purchased their anti-pilling everyday DK Merino blend. I don't know if that's when this yarn, I don't know if it came out when I bought this yarn or if this is a re-release or just a restock or something, but they had a sale on this and I don't remember what it was, but I think it was like 15% off of this yarn. But I was very impressed with the specs on this yarn. So this is a 55% merino super wash yarn and 45% anti-pilling acrylic. So I was very pleased by the thought of having a merino blend that was machine washable and dryable, but also the fact that it is still a pretty large um, skein. This is still 100 grams and I believe I paid, I think I paid $6.49 for each of these, which is a great deal for a merino blend yarn. Um, I don't really know what this yarn is on a regular basis but i'd say that's still a pretty good deal no matter what the actual regular price is so i bought several 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 colors of this yarn but this one in particular i'm going to be using for another sweater i don't remember what it's called <laughs> i just know that it's by martin story and i'm actually going to be making something from um the spring and summer rowan magazine so rowan 69 um, I'm going to be making a sweater that he has in that pattern, or he has in that magazine. And I'm going to be using this color, which is olive, which I guess it kind of does look olive. To me, this is a little bit, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Yes, olive. I'm going to be using olive. I don't know why I'm upset with the name, but I am. I don't feel like it's olive. But it is really beautiful and it does look the same color that I saw online. So I'm not disappointed in the color or anything, but okay. I got 10 balls of this because I didn't buy this yarn in any specific quantity for any specific project, but I knew I wanted to make whatever I could ever I wanted to with this yarn. And I picked this sweater because I think it will be beautiful and I'm going to add beads into this project. I'm going to put a picture up of the beads that I've already purchased as well to go with this sweater and I'm going to try to put those beads in the um in the middle of the kind of pain like um texture of this sweater. It's going to be beautiful. You will see. I'm going to cast this on soon um because I really I bought this yarn in March to make that sweater and I want to make it now so I'm going to cast it on so just be prepared for that. But I also got Berry which is the same merino blend but I got three balls of this for Nala. I'm hoping to make a dress or something like that for her with that yarn or just a sweater. I'm not picky. She could have just a sweater in that too but I think I might try to make a dress with that instead. Um, and then I got five balls of the spice color, right? Yeah, spice. This is a beautiful orangey brown color and I think this will be a beautiful sweater as well. I don't know which one just yet either. But then I also got Ecru, which is just an off-white and this I got five balls of as well. So. Those I got for some lightweight projects because I do really like working DK weight sweaters and I don't really have as many for myself, but I figure 500 grams would be good for a project that maybe has minimal um, texture in it, maybe just like a simple single cable or maybe just like a color work yoke or something like that. We'll see. 500 grams is a good place to start for any sweater. I can get pretty far with any project, if not finish one and have some left over. So I thought that was good to add to my stash. And that, is that gonna be the end? 
Oh no, I have one more thing. I don't know why I keep getting this magazine out because I'm sure it's just absolutely irritating <laughs> to have the glare and everything. I also want to make this cardigan and I know that I'm going to cast this one on pretty soon. It's called Lazarite. Lazarite? Lazarite? Something like that. But it's really beautiful and it has a Fair Isle um, design on the front but the back is solid colored and the sleeves are solid colored as well. So I want to work that for myself and I got some yarns from my stash uh, that I'm going to be using for like the brownish part. Um, I got this Red Heart Super Saver in the color Cafe Latte and it's a beautiful color. Um, I really like, I mean, I don't know how people feel about working with Super Saver or anything, but it's a super durable yarn and it lasts forever. So I have a really great feeling about working a color work design with this because I feel like I won't have to worry about pilling. I won't have to worry about um, it wearing thin in areas and things like that, but I don't know. I have loads of this. It's super inexpensive and for a project like this, I just know that this will be quite warm. So I'm looking forward to making it with this and instead of using the DMC embroidery thread as I've talked about already because I just don't want to for this particular project, I had an idea for what I want to do a little bit differently. So. I bought this yarn from Joanne as well and if you can see it is already very sparkly and shiny and I don't have to do any fussing around with an extra spool of thread while I'm trying to knit and do color work and so this is Big Twist Twinkle it is a really large skein it comes with 170 grams as well just like the soft so it's more than 100 grams and it is 97 acrylic 97 percent acrylic and three percent metallic metallic fiber the only thing I am a little bit worried about is whether or not this metallic fiber will like flake off or something like that over time but as I mentioned it's a super inexpensive project by like just starting off so I don't mind compromising on maybe the lasting power versus the ease of using a, th a yarn that's already got some shine to it and this was really inexpensive I want to say I paid maybe four dollars for this yarn and this is just the cake that I've um, wound off because I am going to be working the front as two pieces but at the same time on one needle so I wound off another cake so that I can work them both from separate cakes instead of pulling from either side it just works out easier that way and so I thought these would be really beautiful contrasts together isn't that fun? I like that. Okay, so that's my last exciting idea. Um, I am probably going to um, cast on this sweater before I get to the pink in uh, Heirloom Rose one from with the Chimonix yarn, that project. Probably will work on this one first because I'm really chomping at the bit to start another color work project. And... Um, yeah so if you see that one pop up you know why and I think and so my motivation with knitting and everything has really been to replace projects as they're finished with a new project so that it motivates me more to finish the things that I've already started and give them the time that they deserve and finish them all the way through um, which is exactly what I did with this project so I had finished the uh, scarf the neckerchief the beaded one that I talked about in my last podcast and then I cast it on this cowl and when I finished this cowl I started working on the textured turtleneck poncho for Nala and so that project replaced this one so I'm trying to work in that method and in that way so that I don't have so many projects building up and so many whips building up so once I finish this endless possibility sweater the one with the cables on the top I will definitely cast on the twinkle yarn and the cafe latte yarn 
um, to do that card again. And so that's kind of my process here. I feel like that is going to work out for me to kind of check myself on casting on like 30 things at once. Maybe. We'll see how effective that really turns out to be. But yeah, that's going to be the end of my podcast for this week. I hope that you've been having a great week. Let me know down below what you're knitting on, what you're making on. Have you started any projects since the last time that we talked? Are you thinking about starting some new projects or did you get some yarn for some new projects? I'd love to know down below in the comment section. And until the next time, bye-bye.